Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming my presentation today. My name is Dongwan Kim, came from the University of Texas at Austin. Unfortunately, other colleagues, the Michael Kunzman and Dr. Hall couldn't be here, but I should give them credit. Uh, they involved a lot of the initial sensor design, the, the work I present today. So here's the outline for today. So I'm gonna show you some motivation and device characterizations and some future directions related to these projects. So here's the motivation. Uh, so in 1995, the Dr. Miles at the SUNY Binghamton University, uh, they uh, the published paper about the fly uh, it has a special organ. Can hear the can it exactly locating the cricket by hearing the sound of the cricket. The reason is being uh, this fly need to lay its egg inside of the fly. So to do that, the, they need to figure out where the fly is. And the scientists quite surprised because this, uh, the fly is quite small, but they ju just, just couldn't understand initially how they can detect not only just omnidirectional sound pressure, but also pressure gradients. It turns out the, the fly, the hearing organ has utilized uh, two different vibration modes. Basically one is a rocking mode, the other one is a basically a flapping mode. So that the flapping mode, the mainly for the omnidirectional detection, but the, the, this rocking mode uh, is highly sensitive to the pressure gradients. So by having that uh, characteristic, the, this fly able to detect that the cricket's location. So our motivation is the utilizing the same bio, the biologically inspired these structures uh, into our CMUD, but at the same time, like the conventional CMUD, uh, utilizing the vacuum seal, vacuum sealing. This is uh, to minimize the thermal mechanical noise by evacuating the air inside of the sensor. So here's our device introductions. Uh, the left hand side, the top image showing the 3D rendered image of the, our sensor, the cutaway view. And this entire sensor covered with this uh, polysilicon membranes and then underneath this uh, membrane, you can see here uh, the represent in red, which is our the internal beam. Underneath this beam, we have the pivots so that uh, this beam actually only rotating along the y-axis. Uh, this is the y-axis. And while it's preventing the other direction rotations. And we have the two bottom electrodes and then top membrane serve as our gr ground plane. And the right-hand side, uh, you can see the micrograph of actual the device. And the, the regions uh, represent in red is our actual diaphragm area. The, although the rest of area is a membrane, but it's supported by the rigid the post. So those areas is the diaphragm is not moving while only uh, near this uh, diaphragm anchor area is only moving depend, depending on the incoming sound, sound field. So here's our layer stack of our device. Uh, it, it has the multiple sacrificial oxide layer and the polysilicon layers to build quite complex the mechanical structures. And upon release, uh, this internal beam is actually not, the pivot is not touched down. So at this point, device not working as we the design. But af after the vacuum sealing, we use atomic layer deposition to have the conformal uh, layers which is necessary to, to have the successful vacuum sealing. But often after the finishing the vacuum sealing deposition, um, the layer deposition, when you the bring the chamber back to the atmospheric pressure, while the inside of the sensor remaining in vacuum, uh, the outside, the pressure, the pressure difference inside and outside of the sensor will bring the, the this pivot down, touch down to the bottom surface. So here's our SEM images of our sensors. Uh, we have the four the sensors has different beam, internal beam thickness, but the, the structure is pretty much the same. And then, as I mentioned before, we have the two diaphragm region, and then this center area is uh, where the 
the diaphragm anchored to the internal beam. And this image is a little bit hard to see, but in between those two layers, those are the, our internal beam, and then this top layer is our membrane, and then there's a gap in between the membrane and internal beam, and then this is a, here's the, the key feature, the, the pivot you can see here, and then the rest of area is the, the silicon substrate. And the, the right bottom, the image showing our vacuum sealing structures, uh, I may need to some more detailed description, so here's a more magnified view. So if you look at the pre previous image, actually you can see a lot of the release holes, and then each release hole has these kind of structures. And what it does is uh, during the release process, uh, this hole is invisible here, but used for the, the vapor HF release process. But after the release process, when you're doing the vacuum sealing, uh, it basically has a hole, but the underneath there's a different like structures. So using the ALD, which give us the highly conformal layers, uh, we basically seal the gap in between this bottom plate and the hole by de depositing like the about 200 the thick, micron thick the aluminum oxide, which give us pretty much like effectively 400 nanometer deposition around this area. So after the vacuum sealing, we did the initial device characterization uh, by applying uh, the DC bias for both sides of diaphragm, but we apply only the AC signal one side, so that one, after that, we measured the motion of the diaphragm using the laser Doppler virometers, uh, the LDB, and this is uh, the response we got. And the first one is a rocking mode, and the second one is a flapping mode, we call. And then those results is uh, closely matched to our the FEM simulations, which incorporate with the vacuum sealing effect too. And after this measurement, we are curious to see whether this, the first peak is indeed the rocking mode. So to verify that, we basically apply the same uh, AC signal to both sides of the diaphragm and measure the same diaphragm motions. So basically applying the, the same phase AC signal to the both sides of the diaphragm, what it does is effectively uh, the prohibit this the first rocking mode. And then you can see here this red is the initial measurement the only applying the AC signal one side, while this uh, blue curve, the trace you can see the first mode is uh, suppressed quite a bit, while the, the second mode still remaining the same. This gives us some idea, like the first peak is indeed the rocking mode, uh, while the second peak is the, the flapping mode. And here's uh, the measurement we, we did uh, to verify this vacuum sealing effect. So the first graph actually showing the profile, profile change before and after vacuum sealing process. And before the vacuum sealing is remaining pretty much the flat, but the after, after the, the vacuum sealing process, the, the pressure difference inside and outside of the sensors effectively really the bring down the, the beam, but at the same time that the pressure difference also deformed the diaphragm a little bit, and then we have about like 2.6 micron uh, the deformation at the top surface. And we also did the same, the frequency response measurements uh, before and after vacuum sealing process. And then this dotted line is showing before the vacuum sealing and then this, this sharp peak trace, the traces having those sharp peaks is actually after the vacuum sealing. And then as you can see, the effect of the vacuum sealing is uh, quite dumb, like obvious here. After this, uh, the initial characterization, uh, we trying to do some pitch catch measurement. Uh, this is done in the air, and basically the idea is uh, put two sensors, pretty much identical sensors, but the one side, the we sending the signal, the basically transmitting the ultrasound, but the, the other side, we catching that signal using other device. And then here's our results. Uh, so basically we use like 20 cycle, 300 hertz, the burst signal uh, from the transmitting device, which is the, the, 
the blue trace, and the red is our the, the receiver signal. Uh, to verify whether this is uh, indeed the uh, acoustic signal or not, uh, we check this uh, time difference from the transmitting device uh, versus uh, our receive receiving device, the time difference, and there is about uh, 14 microseconds. And the actual device from this previous slide is about the five millimeter the away each other. So at given frequency, about the 450 kilohertz, uh, these numbers match with our calculation. So this one quite give us a com convinced results. This is uh, indeed the acoustic signal. And we also noticed this beating effects, and then the period is about the 321 microseconds. And uh, it turns out the transmitting device and the receiver device is actually the resonant frequency has about three kilohertz difference. So that the, that the resonant frequency difference actually creating this uh, beating effects. And then we verified that after we finished this measurement, we individually the, did the electrostatic actuation measurement again, and then we got uh, about three, hertz, three, three kilohertz difference. So the, for the, the second generation prototype, we quite happy with these results, but uh, we still think uh, we gotta the bring the rocking, rocking mode frequency and the, the flapping mode frequency the further away each other to have better direct, directivity uh, the response. Uh, to do that, the the rocking, the, the internal beam has to be stiffer, and then obviously there's a many ways, either increasing the thic thickness of the, the beam or using different materials to have the better, higher stiffness. But at the same time, we also wanna bring down entire operation frequency range further down so that we can use for other acoustic applications. Finally, uh, we also want to like the, put the dimensions right so that we have the maximum directivity characteristic by putting the distance between two diaphragm about like the half of the wavelengths the, of the, where the device is operating. So we did some like simple analysis using the ANSYS, the FEM, uh, the package, and then Obviously, increasing the beam thickness is about like the, yeah, 20 micron beam thickness. We just uh, put quite thick the, the beam here, and then the first mode pretty much remaining the same since the, the it's rocking mode, the, the beam doesn't involve much except it's a mechanically coupled to diaphragm. Okay, yeah. it's the last slide. So, so, but the, the second mode pretty much increased quite a bit. And we also trying to move, bring down this operational frequency range down to lower frequency range. Uh, to do that, we need uh, more compliant diaphragms. And then they give us much better results. So I think that this is uh, where we wanted to go for the second generation prototype. So conclusion, so I will just skip this one due to the time. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Mm -hmm. okay.